Welcome to Breakthrough Success. I'm your host, Mark Aberti, the content marketing expert, bringing you five new episodes every week where I and top level guests teach you how to take your business to the next level and achieve your breakthrough. Hello, Breakthrough Success sisters. I just wanted you all to know before the episode actually starts, I've been working a little bit behind the scenes to give you something really special. So a while ago, I wrote my book, Content Marketing Secrets, which helps people create, promote, and optimize their content for growth and revenue. And I just put the finishing touches together to offer that for free to anyone who is interested. So if you want your free copy of Content Marketing Secrets, all you have to do is head over to markgaberti.com slash book. Now, let's jump right into the episode. One of the things about SEO that a lot of people just getting started with it, uh, like one of the big things with it, it, it just seems so complicated. There just seems to be so many different steps, so many different ways to approach it. It's such a long term, like a lot of waiting and a lot of work kind of a game until you see those results. So in this episode, we're just going to make SEO a little more simple for you so that like because it could be complex even to like the like uh, content marketers who are spending like so many hours of their craft every single day. And we're just going to get through a lot of that haze and make it as simple for everyone as possible. So the guest who we have for today's episode, he is the president, CEO, and part owner of Simple Tiger LLC, an SEO agency that delivers extraordinary results for its clients. He's delivered several speaking engagements on the topics of SEO and digital marketing for a variety of companies, including NCR and Comcast, and was asked to teach digital marketing to senior level students pursuing marketing degrees at the University of South Florida. Today's guest for episode 239 of the Breakthrough Success Podcast is none other than Jeremiah Smith. Jeremiah, it is such a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you so much, Mark. I appreciate you having me. I'm excited to be here today. Jeremiah, I'm really looking forward to this episode because SEO is just such this big, uh, like we all know it's important, but there's just so many moving parts to it. So we're going to talk about how we can make it a little more simple for all of us. But I wonder if you could give us some background first. So your company, Simple Tiger, is an SEO agency. I'm wondering if you could Talk a little bit about like why you got started with Simple Tiger and then the more general point SEO. Sure, yeah, I love talking about that. I'm very passionate about this. So, uh, let's see. I have a background, or previously had a background in building websites for clients. And um, one of the clients that I built a website for once upon a time asked me afterwards if I could uh, just help them get in Google. They said, "Hey, we like the site. We want it to show up in Google." I didn't think anything of it at the time, but when they asked me to do that, I was like, that's a good question. I don't even know how to do that. So I started looking into how to getting their site to show up in Google and discovered this whole underground um, industry called search engine optimization. And I was blown away. I was like, oh my God, I see that there's probably a lot of value in not just showing up in Google, but strategically showing up in Google. And so I started testing my hunch and said to them, you know, here's the deal. I want to, I want to try that. I want to do that for you guys, but I don't really know what I'm doing. So bear with me as I try to get the site into Google. And they were totally open with that. So we started uh, just kind of going through the motions. This is back in 2006, 2007. And um, I started getting their site to rank well in Google for some of their target keywords. That took a few months. Um, and they started getting lots of traffic and lots of business, the phone ringing, things like that. And after the span of about six months, I was able to really add some serious bottom of line uh, revenue and, and profit to their business. So it was it was really exciting to kind of go through that. That totally changed my focus from doing website building to moving into the world of uh, digital marketing in general with a specific focus and specialty in search engine optimization. And one of the things with search engine optimization is that uh, like it has a reputation for being something that it takes a really long time to see results. And like some people think it takes several years before you see results, or other people are able to do it in a few months. And there's no like uh, magic, like you get all the shots from search engines overnight. Like that's not like anything like that. But with like even though there's no overnight thing. I'm sure there's a way to speed up the results a little bit. So 
I'm wondering if you could share with us an idea of like how we could speed up our SEO results, like speed up the amount of traffic we get from search engines and what we should be focused on. Sure, yeah. So first things first, um, I see search engine optimization as a top of funnel um, traffic uh, attracting or acquisition capability. So you bring in traffic through search engine optimization, much like you bring in traffic through paid search or through Facebook advertising or any other kind of social media advertising. Um, those are all top of funnel when we're talking about uh, inbound marketing or marketing in general. Um, there's also the middle of funnel and bottom of funnel. So middle of funnel will be anything that takes that traffic that's on your site and then converts it into a lead uh, or some kind of marketing qualified lead or, or you know, contact that you have that you can then reach out to and push further through the funnel down to the, the bottom of the funnel. Bottom of funnel being where your sales process actually kicks in and you try to convert them from just a lead into a sale of some sort. Um, or, or some kind of final tangible value from, uh, you know, from a relationship with that person. So in that regard, when I look at SEO, I think about the top of funnel nature that it has, but I also think about the speed that SEO has. And I know for a fact that SEO is kind of like the Titanic versus a, a cigarette boat. It's very slow, very slow, but it carries a whole lot of power and a whole lot of weight. Um, so in regards to marketing, if speed is what you need right away, and maybe you're fresh into uh, investing in marketing for your business, or you're really looking at stomping your foot on the gas pedal, I actually recommend almost every client that comes through start with a, a short period of paid search, to be honest. I know it sounds a little crazy, but I always recommend clients jump into paid search because uh, first things first, you can prove certain keywords in paid search that might take us months to figure out from an SEO perspective, right? So for example, let's say we, we do some research around a few keywords for your business right now, and we find that you know maybe this list of like 20 keywords is what we want to go after, is what we want to rank for organically in Google. In order to rank for those keywords, the first thing we got to do is optimize your website technically so that it, it operates appropriately, so the search engines can fully index that website. The second thing we've got to do is address all of those keywords in some form of content on the website. So we've got to have some kind of content that talks relative to those keywords. We want to be as relative as possible um, and as relevant as possible to those keywords. Uh, that means creating a variety of different pages. If you have 20 different keywords, that's probably going to be a good bit of content that we're going to produce on the website. That takes a lot of work and a lot of money. You know, that could easily be 10 grand worth of work and that could easily take a month or two uh, to produce that amount of content. Once that content is done, we then need to not only get it indexed, which hopefully it'll be indexed quickly because your site's now technically optimized uh, and, and you're submitting that sitemap to Google and you've got a good relationship through Google Search Console and things like that. But once that content's built and published on your site, now we have to build links to that content. And it may not take a lot of links. It may take a few links to each piece of content to get those pieces to rank for those target keywords. But that, that's going to take time, too. We've got to do outreach. We've got to find, first of all, find places that we're going to build links from. And then second of all, outreach to those places and try to you know, secure those links. So all this, as you can see, takes time. And whatever we can do to speed that up for most clients, the, the more we can do that, the better. So what I find is you know, we get six to nine months into this project and we determine, oh my gosh, out of those 20 keywords that we're trying to get the client to rank for, if they're ranking for half of them, for example, six to nine months in, uh, there may only be one or two of those 10 keywords that they're ranking for that actually really drive most of their conversions and their sales. And it's, it's going to be difficult for us to jump up in the rankings for those keywords because that's just the nature of, of the way things go. There's always going to be some competition for keywords. You're rarely going to find golden keywords that drive a lot of value. So what I would rather do is instead of spending six to nine months to try to learn that lesson, I'd rather spend one month, build a landing page or two, uh, launch a couple of ad campaigns at Google AdWords, run ads across those 20 keywords, plus why not another 50, 60 keywords, you know, and see what actually gets us some conversions into a lead. And whatever gets us conversions into a lead, 
let's focus in on those kinds of keywords. Let's see how good those leads are. And if those kind of keywords are really good, then let's iterate on that. Meaning let's now build a custom landing page for that keyword. Let's now build custom ads for those keywords. And let's see if that conversion rate goes up. My hunch is that it will, because we're delivering a more relevant experience based on that keyword query now. And if we're able to do that, we're able to start driving leads, immediately the client's happy, right? Or, or if you are the client, immediately you're happy because now you're getting leads in, but, but you're spending money on these ads every month. Well, now we can actually tailor back the amount of money that we're spending on those ads every month because we've gotten efficient. So where we were spending two to three grand a month on ads uh, and getting nothing, we're now spending two to three grand a month on ads and getting a lot of, of leads pouring in to the point where we can actually reduce that probably to 1500 a month on ads uh, or, or something along those lines and start putting that money into actually developing content and building links that are going to help your pages organically rank for those keywords that are converting really well. So that's usually what I recommend uh, people do if they want to speed up the effect of, of SEO is reach outside of SEO to get started and then uh, inform your SEO efforts with what you learn in the real world by running Google AdWords ads. I really like the idea of using the ads when you're um, at that point where you have a few keywords, using the ads to see which keywords are ranking the best and creating content uh, around those keywords because, I mean, the ads, like the data shows that these are the keywords you should focus on. You create content on those keywords instead of trying to rank for everything under the sun. But one of the things that I want to ask you is, like, when it comes to content creation, not all of our blog posts are immediately optimized for SEO unless you know a lot about SEO going in. So do you view it as more important to be creating more new content or to optimize what's already there? Maybe you save some time with the uh, content creation stage and you're able to optimize it better for SEO. I would like to first uh, take a step back and challenge you on an assumption you made that your blog articles may not be optimized for SEO. Um, that is, um, that's a common, a very common assumption that people make, um, but I, I address it specifically because as Google becomes more intelligent, which they are now thriving on artificial intelligence and that's getting better and better, um, what they're going to be able to do is deduce the value that people are acquiring out of the content that they're reading and lining up pieces of content with search queries better and more accurately and more relevantly. That's Google's idea, that's their MO. So that said, uh, the SEO isn't mentioned there, right? Um, optimizing content for SEO is kind of a nebulous categorical error if you think about it. It doesn't even make sense to optimize content for SEO. What are you trying to do? Well, you're trying to bring in visitors. You're trying to bring in people and capture their attention, move them from the top of funnel to the middle of funnel to the bottom of funnel. And your content, this is where you know a lot about content marketing, your content is that bridge that bridges people from the top of funnel to the middle of funnel, and sometimes from the middle of funnel to the bottom of funnel. So if you can do that with your content, and that content is writing about a subject that I'm interested in, for example, let's say, let's say I'm working on my RV, you're a big RV company, and uh, I'm trying to figure out what kind of refrigerator to buy for my RV, and you guys wrote an article about the five things you need to know about RV refrigerators, uh, and you explain everything I need to know about it in that article, um, you don't necessarily need to quote unquote optimize it for SEO. I might be searching for something that you knew to write about, and you knew to write about it because it's a common question or concern that maybe you hear about in the sales process, or maybe a lot of people ask you, um, and that drove you to write the content and kind of answer that question ahead of time. So from an SEO perspective, I don't think it makes sense to go back and look at blog articles and say we should optimize these from an SEO perspective. I would optimize them from a value perspective. Are you delivering value in that content? And is that content relevant to a subject? If that content's relevant to a subject, but your title is clever and doesn't hint at the subject at all, doesn't even get to the subject, then that needs to be optimized. But that's, that's gonna be optimized so that the person clicking that title or reading that title understands what they're going to get when they read the article. You know, people read headlines in newspapers and they immediately know what they're going to get when they uh, when they pick up that newspaper. The headline is very clear. It's never like some clever quip that is just completely nebulous. You know what I mean? So, so long as our content, our headlines, our titles, things like that are relevant, are clear, as opposed to being clever, 
I think that you'll do really well at driving clicks and at driving people into that piece of content. And then it's up to you to deliver value on that piece of content. Uh, if you can do that, then really there is no need to kind of optimize the content on your blog, if that makes sense. And I'd like to focus on value and the um, AI that Google's working on, something that um, obviously we're going to learn about more as it goes. Uh, Jeremiah definitely knows a lot more about it than most of us, uh, like at this stage. But um, and, like I can see the AI like being focused more on value and. Um, like there are things you could do obviously to optimize your content, but if you optimize the content and it's not valuable, then there's no real point. So value comes first, optimization comes second, and AI may even just like uh, make optimization not as uh, essential as it is now. We don't like, uh, who knows what will happen like the next few years due to like Google, like they constantly change their, um, the way they rank content. But one of the things that I've seen as a constant is uh, the more like valuable, healthy backlinks you have, like not just buying hundreds of backlinks, but the more uh, backlinks you have tends to be better for your content. So I'm wondering if you could share with us a little bit how we can get more backlinks for our content. Sure, yeah. So I think a great way to deliver more backlinks uh, and build more backlinks in your content is first of all, when you've produced a piece of content that you know adequately answers the questions that your audience is asking and you know for a fact it delivers value because you feel yourself giving away a piece of, uh, maybe a piece of the farm, you know, or, or giving away something that is just so valuable. You know that you're providing value in it. Then the next thing I like to do to speed up the process of getting uh, eyeballs onto your content and seeing how well it does is actually run some social media campaigns depending on um, what industry you're in and what your content is about, things like that. What I mean by that is literally take a blog article that you put a lot of effort into that you know should work well that you want to build links to and run an ad of $100 to $200 a month pointing at that single blog article uh, on Facebook or LinkedIn or Instagram and promote that ad to a couple of different audiences and test those audiences, see who interacts with that content more. The reason I say this is because that is the same approach as I mentioned earlier about doing the AdWords before SEO, except now we're actually testing the validity of our content to our audience, right? So you can kind of handpick your audience on Facebook and you can say, this audience really likes this type of content, so let's show this type of content to them and see how they respond. Is my content good? And see what their interaction is like. Now, when I say their interaction, I literally mean go into Google Analytics, go to the acquisition channel, grab the, you know, if you're running Facebook ads to this piece of content, go grab the Facebook channel there, the social channel, and, and look at the Facebook referrer, and look at how people are interacting with that blog article versus other content on your site or versus your site's baseline content engagement. Meaning, what is the bounce rate for that piece of content? What is the dwell time or the amount of time that they're sitting on that piece of content and reading it? Um, are they clicking through any calls to action in that piece of content? Are they getting any kind of conversions into a, a lead or an email subscription or anything like that? Are people liking it? Are they sharing it? Are they commenting on it? Things like that. So if you can see that there's an increased amount of engagement on that piece of content, this is what's exciting. Part of Google's artificial intelligence algorithmic updates include trumping their old algorithmic elements of link building with user engagement signals. Now, this is a huge deal. So if you're listening to this and you're not too familiar with SEO or you're just kind of getting into it or you're very familiar with it, you think that links are the single most important thing you can do in SEO, that has been true for easily 15, 20 years. Links were the single most important thing you could do. Nowadays, like in the past couple of months, actually, it's not quite as true anymore. Links are kind of secondary to user engagement signals. User engagement signals are things that uh, I mentioned earlier about bounce rates, dwell time, click-throughs, page views, things like that, where people are actively engaged with your content. And Google is monitoring that because they have you know, the hottest browser, Google Chrome, so they're monitoring people's user engagement. Uh, a lot of people have Google Analytics installed. I'm sure they're using Google Analytics to monitor that. Um, and they're also using clickstream data through not just their browser, but other uh, clickstream data providers. So through all of that, Google is able to quickly deduce uh, good content based on how users are engaging with that content. 
So if you can spike that algorithm with your Facebook, or at least test that algorithm and, and your content effectiveness with your Facebook ads pointed at promoting your content, then you start off by driving traffic to that content to see if they're going to engage with it well. If they engage with it well, you're going to win. Uh, the next thing that's likely going to happen is it's going to be easier for you to get links from anyone in that audience who actually has influence and capability of building links, maybe to their own blog or something like that. Um, but regardless, that's going to help you rank. And then the next step after that, in my opinion, is to start a traditional PR outreach approach, um, but do it, of course, online, digitally in this, in this new age here and reach out to bloggers, reach out to industry publications and let them know about this piece of content you've created and see if they will feature it. Um, you can even do that beforehand, find out if there is a piece of content that they would like to talk about or pitch a few different ideas and see what PR outlets are interested in hearing about and then produce a piece of content around that and then follow that same process. But that's pretty much my approach and, and Simple Tiger's approach to building uh, links and, and, and doing the next steps after you produce content. And I really like the focus on the engagement, and that's definitely a new change that like I haven't really heard about as much. I mean, link building is still important, but definitely not as important as the engagement. And that's just not just from an SEO standpoint. That's also important from an overall experience standpoint that you provide your visitors with when you when they're on your blog, they're on your channel, they're on your podcast. So, uh, like uh, like the experience is something that's really important, and one of the uh, things I want to also address is that some people I feel like their SEO like they're not getting too many results from it so I'm wondering what do you believe holds most people back from getting these really good transformations from SEO so I think back I mean this this may sound kind of kind of sad but I think back in 2006 2007 SEO was king of the hill at driving traffic at driving conversions, driving sales, things like that. I think over time it's gotten significantly more difficult to continue doing the same kinds of things we used to do with SEO. I think that marketers have worn out search engine optimization. Uh, talk about being nebulous and abstract. Um, but really I do think that uh, a lot of marketers have kind of figured out SEO to a large degree and are delivering better on it. And so the, the competition is very cutthroat and the market is saturated for search engine optimization. That said, I think what that means is that we need to, as marketers, take a more holistic approach to everything that we're doing. You know, we for a long time have been SEO specialists uh, at Simple Tiger and have just absolutely refused to do any other kind of work, uh, such as paid search, for example. I know that sounds really counterintuitive based on what I just discussed with you guys, but um, the before, what we have been doing for the longest time is anytime anyone came through and we saw that they needed some paid search work first in order to establish some keyword baselines and things like that, we actually referred them out to an agency that specializes in paid search. And for the longest time, that's really worked well. And I mean, it still kind of does work well for us to do that, except that we realized that the, the, uh, the problem there is that now clients or, or businesses aren't wanting to go to five, six, seven different agencies for all the different services that they need completed. They would rather work with one agency, spend one you know, line item on, on marketing and have that agency do well at actually driving business for them. And so what we're trying to do now is kind of open up our, um, our solution into a more holistic approach with deep roots in SEO, because I do see it as the single hardest marketing channel you could dive into. Um, but once we've conquered that, it's so much easier for us to kind of look at paid search. And we don't want to be the best paid search guys in town or anything like that, but we do want to you know, help clients drive paid search and then help clients run Facebook ads to promote their content and then help clients do email lead capture and things like that. So I think really, if you want to do a good job at SEO, you need to kind of take a step back and make sure that you're doing a good job at the other elements under the marketing umbrella, or at least strategically considering all the pieces to the puzzle, because they do work together in some way. Very rarely, if ever, you're going to find a, a business industry or client where just SEO is all they need, you know? So I really do think a holistic approach is the way to go. 
And I like that approach where you mentioned that, like, uh, and it makes a lot of sense from in 2006, 2007, it was really a lot easier to rank and download a lot of traffic from SEO just because there weren't as many people. But now you have so many people, like, it's no secret that you can just Google, like, how to rank higher on SEO, come with a few tactics, and you have a lot of marketers as uh, you mentioned, like, having a very advanced approach, and it is a lot more competitive to get those keywords on Google. So a lot has changed, and it's good to uh, put SEO just under that whole umbrella of marketing, not to rely on SEO, but the same can be said about relying on any one method of marketing. And one of the things that I want to ask you also is um, for one of the big challenges that you faced in your journey and the powerful lesson you learned during that challenge. Oh man, that's a good question. There, quite frankly, have been a lot of challenges in my journey. Um, I'm trying to think about what has been probably the single hardest. Um, actually, I would I would probably venture to say that um, realizing that we as an agency probably need to step back from being hyper specialized and hyper focused on just SEO, and that we need to not only consider the rest of the funnel for our clients because we are already considering that. But actually do something about it you know um we've considered the other parts of the uh of the marketing funnel for our clients for years now but we haven't done anything about those other elements such as the paid search pieces the facebook ads pieces the email marketing or anything like that and i'm seeing that that is so critical that we help our clients capture all of that so that they can truly get the value out of the one thing that we are absolutely specialists at which is seo um there are some clients who have come through who, if I if I do step back and I look at what they actually need, honestly, it is uh, it, it may not be SEO right out of the gate. And so I feel very convicted to I have felt very convicted to make some changes in the way we operate and to move away from being just hyper specialized to being strong in that area, but uh, also focusing on the other elements that the clients need. And so something that I'm seeing more and more nowadays is that people come to us and say, here is our goal and here is what we think the solution would be. But we want to leave it up to you guys to tell us. And rarely do they come to us and say, we want SEO. We want to purchase SEO. Usually they come to us and say, we want to purchase what SEO delivers, right? Which is uh, in improved sales, more traffic, something like that. Well, if that's the case, Sometimes SEO is not necessarily the way to do it. You know, there's several ways to skin a cat, basically, <laughs> to go into an old term here. But um, so, so I think kind of coming to the realization that being hyper specialized in one area can actually be detrimental to our clients' business at some point was a harsh realization for me. Um, and I'm still working through that. I'm still kind of digesting it. So you're hearing that live on the radio that <laughs> I'm, I, this is actually an influx item. But I, I really would like to welcome some comments on that whole subject um, because we are we do want to be specialized in terms of who we work with. We like working with SaaS companies. That's kind of our target. We do work with a lot of different types of businesses, but SaaS has been it for us. We really enjoy those, those business models. And then um, in terms of marketing, we think that the holistic approach is just the direction that that we need to go as an agency uh, with strong roots in the most difficult parts that we're going to address along the way and it's interesting how you mentioned that people aren't after seo because of seo in and of itself they're after the traffic they're after the sale so uh, i really like how you mentioned that if you find another way to get the traffic and sales you want seo may not be the best option but it is definitely something good to leverage and uh if you are doing the other marketings right, sometimes SEO does um, just come to play if you're doing all the other things right. So I really like that uh, challenge that you mentioned. And uh, one of the things that um, I also want to touch upon because I'm an um, avid bookworm. I read as many books as I can get my hands on. So Jeremiah, I'm wondering if you could share with us three great books that you believe will have a positive impact on us. Hmm. Yeah, right out, right out of the gate, I have three. <laughs> for you, um, two are by the same author. So <clears throat> since we're talking about marketing, and that's my bread and butter, um, if anyone had to take a deep dive, quick course in marketing, meaning these are going to be three books, and in sequential order, if you follow them through this order, you will win at marketing. You will understand. You'll be so much further ahead in marketing 
uh, knowledge and capability of what you can do than your competition. Uh, so start with the book, uh, uh, Start With Why by Simon Sinek. So start there. That's the very first book. And it's funny that it's called Start With Why because that's a book that I would start with, literally. Um, but he talks you through the process of, of why your company exists and how it's critical that you start with figuring that out first and then how you exist comes next and then what you do to exist comes third. Um, so all that in that book I think is very valuable. So start with why first because I think knowing why you're marketing is the first, the first thing you should do. The second book is called Tribes by Seth Godin. Um, so tribes is a very good book about, um, ultimately who you're talking to. So when it comes to your personas or your audience, I think that's the second most important thing you could do. So the first would be why the second is who, well, tribes helps you understand who and, and create a relationship with who you need to be talking to in your marketing. And then third would probably be another book by Seth Godin called uh, Purple Cow. Um, in that book, he dives deep into differentiation, which I think is really when you start getting into the how, what, when, where kind of aspects of marketing. Um, so that really, in my opinion, that book encapsulates all the rest of, of your marketing efforts with um, differentiating yourself from the competition, ensuring that you're speaking to your audience or who properly, and that uh, your why is constantly in check. Your why can inform your differentiation, your differentiation can support your why, things like that. So I think if you go through those three books in that order, you will, uh, you will crush it in terms of uh, marketing. Jeremiah, thank you for sharing those great book recommendations. Those will all be in the show notes, markperty.com slash E239. We'll throw in the uh, link to uh, the Seth Godin interview on Breakthrough Success. Here's episode 16. And uh, we'll also throw in content marketing secrets in the show notes as well. That's my book. You can get it for free at markperty.com slash book. Just pay for the shipping. And before we wrap up this episode, Jeremiah, I've asked you several questions throughout our time together, but what do you believe is one question that we need to be asking ourselves more often? I think really asking yourself, why do you exist as a business? You know, why does your business exist? Um, again, you know, hearkening back to Simon Sinek's book, Start With Why, if you can figure that out, it will cascade down into a series of decision-making protocols and answers that I think you as a business need to find. Um, so, for example, for us, you know, I, I mentioned that my harsh reality, the harsh challenge that we went through was, you know, in, in our whole time of being a business has been kind of realizing that we might need to change and offer more than just SEO. Well, our why that we put together a few years ago is we exist to do simply effective marketing for clients we love so they can get the customers they need. So you, we don't say anything about SEO in there. We say everything about doing simple, effective marketing. Um, so that's why Simple Tiger exists. And when I realized that, oh my gosh, our vision, why we exist, does not accurately align with what we're currently doing. I'm not going to change our vision because our vision's great. I'm going to change what we're doing, which means we're not going to just do SEO for clients anymore. We're going to start broadening our horizons and looking at the other things that we can do for our clients. And that only came about, that decision only came about because I asked myself, why do we exist as a business? So I think though that question alone can get you through some of the hardest challenges that you'll ever run into as a business, knowing why your business exists. I think it helped you make some of the biggest decisions you could ever make. So ask yourselves that frequently. Jeremiah, thank you for sharing with us that great question. All of your great insights throughout our time together. If you guys want to learn more about Jeremiah, you can head over to simpletiger.com. Uh, you also throw in the uh, free ebook, The Anatomy of SEO for SAAS Companies. All those will be in the show notes. But Jeremiah, I can't thank you enough for sharing all of your great insights with us. It was such a pleasure to have you on Breakthrough Success. Hey, Mark, thank you so much for uh, the talk today. I hope I've helped uh, provide a little value to your listeners. And I, I really am honored to be on the show. So thank you so much for having me. How does over 100 retweets per day sound to you? My free ebook, 27 Ways to Get More Retweets on Twitter, has you covered. I use the methods within this ebook to get over 10,000 retweets every single quarter to learn.